Welcome back, kids. Let's rock and roll in Unit 11. We got two units left of the year. Can you believe it? it's already almost that time? End of the school year coming up. Uh, unit 11, we're going to focus primarily on what are called square roots and radical signs. It's going to be mo one of the most radical dude uh, units we're going to do all year, man. So let's get started, yo. Uh, good thing about Unit 11 is we only have two sections, dude. So this is Section 1. Let's rock and roll today. We're going to talk about simplifying uh, square roots. So let's get started. All right, so notice that I was using the word radical and square root interchangeably. So let's do some quick review. What the heck is a radical? What the heck is a square root? Well, a radical is simply a symbol. Okay, It's kind of like saying an exponent. Um, our radical symbol we've seen used multiple times. We sometimes use it for division. Um, a radical symbol also represents, or we primarily use it in something called a square root. So the radical itself is simply just the symbol we use to represent a square root. So radicals, roots, you'll hear me use them interchangeably. They mean the same thing. They are equal, okay? So what, what, first of all, what is a square root? So take, for example, I give you the square root of 36. Okay, what is a square root asking? Well, square root simply says this. I want to know what number times itself. Okay, and that's, what it, that's the important thing about a square root is it's not two numbers multiplied together. So we're not looking at like factors here, but instead we're looking at two factors or two numbers that multiply together that are the same. So think like a times a is going to give you 36. Well, what number blank times blank would give you 36? If you think about it, some of you probably know this, this is easy, 6 times 6 gives you 36. So therefore, the square root of 36, we simply write as positive 6. Okay. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, hey, what about negative 6 and negative 6? That's the same number as well. That's true, but we're simply going to be looking at what's called the principal square root, which we're primarily going to deal with only the positive. So we're going to say, okay, 6. So that means the square root of 36 is 6. Hopefully, it's a little bit of review. Okay, what's the square root of 64? What number again? What times blank times blank is going to give me 64? Right away you should think, ah, that's 8. Very good. Now the next one, okay, square root of 40. What's the square root of 40? Uh, some of you might be thinking right away, 20, right? No. 20 times 2 is 40. When I say a square root, we're not talking about doubling the number. I want to know what number blank times blank. What number times itself gives me 40? Okay, well, this one might be challenging to think about, but if I think, okay, 5 times 5, that's, let's see, 25. 6 times 6 is 36. We got 7, oopsie daisies, lost my pen tool. We got 7 times 7 is going to be 49. So what do you notice here? Well, first of all, the square root of 40 doesn't fall. It falls in between these two numbers. Okay, so how the heck do I figure out what the square root is if it's between 6 and 7. So we're not going to get a clean number here. That's the issue. We're going to get a decimal. So this is going to be the purpose of today. All right. The purpose of today, what we're going to think about, is how the heck do I simplify um, this radical 40 given that it's not you know, a number 25, 36, 49, something we call a perfect square. So that's going to be the lesson today, is how do we actually simplify this square root of 40. The main property we're going to use to simplify these things is known as the product property of radicals. Product, first thing, product means multiplication. Okay, so if I think radical 40, first of all, I can think what are two numbers that multiply to give me 40? Um, right off the top of my head, I can think, ah, that is 4 times 10. So what this product property says is that I can take radical 40, and if it's 4 times 10, I can simply say this, that it is simply radical 4 times radical 10. So what I can do is break 40 down into factors and then look at the square root of each of those numbers. We're going to use this property today to help us to simplify radicals. Uh, this might be a little confusing at first, but you'll kind of get the gist of it as we go through. All right, so here's the process we are going to do. To simplify, you heard me say a word before called a perfect square. Okay, um, here is what I have. It is called a perfect square number line. What I'm doing is looking at simply all of the positive numbers from zero. Could go all the way up to infinity. I stopped here at 15 because that gives me a large number. And what I have here, what are called, these are called the perfect squares. 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and so on. 
These are called perfect squares because the square root of these numbers is a whole number. Square root of 0 is 0 because 0 times 0 gives me that. Square root of 1 is 1 because 1 times 1 gives me that. Square root of 4 is 2 because 2 times 2 gives me 4. Square root of 9 is 3 because 3 times 3 equals 9. So these are what are called perfect squares. Okay. Now, why is this useful? Well, we're going to use these perfect squares to help us simplify radicals. Here's what I mean. Take, for example, the square root of 72. Okay. If you take a look at our number line, 72 is not on here. 72, however, lies between 64 and 81, right? So I know that it's going to lie between 8 and 9, all right? But what is it, okay? And, and here I don't want you to plug it in um, to your calculator and just get a decimal, but instead what we want to do is try and simplify this, okay? So the first thing we're going to do, step one, is you're going to write your perfect squares number line or your list of perfect squares. That's what I have here, okay? So, on your homework, you can refer to this. If you're on your mastery check, you might want to remember these things. Okay, good way to remember is just list zero all the way through. Usually 10 should be enough. And then do zero times zero, one times one, and that'll get you those perfect squares, okay? So I'm going to look at 72, and first I'm going to start at the number given. So I'm going to start with 72, and I've located where it is on my number line, right? So I'm going to, I located that it's between 64 and 81. So I'm going to check each perfect square on top of the number line until I find a factor. So I'm going to start here and I'm actually going to make, or sorry, work my way down this number line and I'm going to see is any one of these numbers a factor of 72. I don't mean these numbers in blue but I'm talking about the numbers in green. Okay, so first of all, is 64 a factor of 72? So 64 times something, does that give me 72? No, that's too big. So I'm just going to cross that off my list. 49, does 49 go into 72? Same thing. Cross that off my list. Okay, go down next to 36. Does 36 go into 72? Yes, it does. Okay, so I know right here that 72 is simply equal to 36 times what? Well, it's times 2. Okay, now using my product property of radicals, if I know 72 is 36 times 2, I'm basically saying that it's the square root of 36 times the square root of 2, okay? So what I did is I found my factor, and now I'm going to write the first number, 36, under its own radical. Then I'm going to write the other factor, 2, under the second radical. So I'm going to use that property to split these up. And then 4, I'm going to simplify the first factor written. And hopefully if you do this correctly, this is the key thing here. If you do this correctly, you will find, my friends, that it is a perfect square and it'll always simplify to a whole number. Okay? So if I look at this, okay, what is the square root of 36? Well, the square root of 36 is 6. Let me switch my color back to blue here. The square root of 36 is 6 times radical 2. And this right here is my answer. It's simplified, it's not a decimal. But basically, the square root of 72 is 6 radical 2 when simplified. And that's the process we're going to go through today. Key thing here, and this is where kitties get str they struggle with, and I, you know what, I don't really understand why, but we have to understand this idea of perfect squares. If you can get this number line down and understand what it means, you will be a master at this section, okay, and this whole unit uh, in its entirety. All right, so let's go through some examples. You guys do not have this number line on your notes here, but you can refer to the one on the top of your packet. So I'm going to go through three examples here. we got some more examples on the back. So these ones are just going to simplify some basic radicals. So I'm going to start first with radical 12, okay? Radical 12, where is it? If I refer to my number line, radical 12 is between 9 and 16. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at 9. And I'm going to ask myself, does 9 go into 12? No, it does not. Then I'm going to move my way down. Does 4 go into 12? Yeah, 12 is simply 4 times 3. Okay, so I'm going to write my perfect square first, my other factor second, follow your steps. And then what I'm going to do is split this up, radical 4, radical 3. And then now I ask myself, okay, what is the square root of 4? Using my perfect square, I know that simplifies to 2, so I get 2 radical 3. Boom, there's my answer. Okay, now just real quick on this one. Um, is this second step necessary? No, this is not. A lot of you, once you get used to this, can probably jump right away to that 
third step when you split them up. Okay? All right, 98. So let's start at 98. Where is 98 in my number line? Well, it's between 81 and 100. 98 is really close to, 10, or to 100, so I know it's going to be probably one of the higher 9, 9.8 or something like that. But again, I don't want a decimal. I want to simplify this. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to go to 81. Does 81 go into 98? Okay, now if you haven't done this already, when I'm asking you to say, does 81 go into 98, you probably should use a calculator. 98 divided by 81, do I get a nice clean number? No, you don't. Okay, then I check 64. That doesn't work. Then I check 49. Bingo, 49 does work, okay? So I got the square root of 49 times what? It should be times 2, okay? Always, again, start here from the largest one. Start from 81 and work your way down. Do not think, oh, right away, uh, I don't know, maybe 1 goes into it. We want to try and find the largest perfect square that goes into that number. Now what I can do, again, is split this square root of 49, square root of 2, Square root of 49 right here is 7, so I get 7 times radical 2. Boom. Done. Okay, let's try and do this next one quick. So I look at 200. 200, again, on our number line is between 14 and 15. I'm going to work my way down. Again, try and find your perfect squares here. All right, so I'm going to work 196. That definitely doesn't go in. Work my way down, and now you guys can probably see that as we work our way down, as you're checking, 100 is going to go in there. Okay, so I'm going to put radical 100 times 2. Okay, again, split this up, radical 100, radical 2, you're going to get 10 radical 2, because 100 simplifies down to 10. Boom. Done. Okay, so again, pretty simple once you get used to using the perfect squares. Right. More examples, more examples, more examples. Now i got some extra sass here. Notice the number 4, I have a number on the outside, negative 4. Well, negative 4 is already on the outside. When I write negative 4 next to radical 300, think about what that means. It's very similar to said if I were to say negative 4x. What am I doing with these two things? That means multiplication. So you are multiplying. So that's multiplication. So here this is basically saying negative 4 times the square root of 300. Okay, well I don't know what the square root of 300 is, so what I want to do is simplify. I want to simplify this expression, right? But what's the square root of 300? I don't know. Well, what we're going to do is simplify square root of 300. Negative 4, that's already on the outside. That doesn't have a root, or a radical, I mean. This one does, so I'm going to try and find what this is simplified. So again, refer to your list, okay? What goes into 300? Probably all thinking 100. Bingo, that's going to be the 1. So this is going to be negative 4 times radical 100, okay? I'm going to do this split right away. I'm sorry, I made that one a little too long times radical 3. Again, I'm going to split the radicals up. <clears throat> now, I have negative 4, and then radical with 100, that simplifies down to 10. Now remember, what am I doing with these two things when they're written next to each other? Always remember I'm still multiplying these. Another thing too I want to bring up here is once I take the square root of 100 and get 10, I don't write the radical anymore because a square root is an operation. What I mean by that is when I say 2 times 3 and I get 6, I don't say 6 times. My answer is 6. So when I say square root of 100 or radical 100, that's 10 and that's it. Okay? But I still have to keep my radical 3. Now the last thing I'm going to do is simplify by taking negative 4 times 10, and that's going to give me negative 40 radical 3. Okay? So again, Things on the outside, we're going to keep on the outside, but it becomes one long string of multiplication. But this is what's simplified then is negative 40 radical 3. Okay, next one, 2 radical 18. So again, I'm going to keep the 2. I'm going to split 18 up into two factors. Right away, you can probably think 9 and 2. Okay, so I'm going to keep the 2 on the outside. Radical 9 is 3, so that's multiplied. Keep the radical 2. That's going to give me 6 radical 2. Bingo. Okay, see how this is getting easier and easier. Again, 10. Okay, I'm going to think 108, square root of something, square root of something. I'm going to find my two factors. What number is going to go into 108? All right, if this one confuses you, again, start at 108. That's going to be on my number line between 100 and 121. 108 is going to be close to 200, so I check. Does 100 go into that? No. 81? No. 64? No. 49? No. 30? Oh, 36 does. So I have radical 36, and then 36 times what would give me 108? It's going to be 36 times 3. 
Okay, so now I'm going to simplify. It's going to be 10 times what square root of 36 is 6. And radical 3 I'm going to keep by itself because I can't simplify that. Then 10 times 6 is going to be 60, so I have 60 radical 3. Bada bing, bada boom. All right? All right, number 7, let's go radical 33. So I'm going to look at my list. Okay, 33, that's before 36, so that's going to be right here. 25, does that go into it? No. 16, does that go into 33? No. 9, does that go into 33? No. 4, does that? No. 1, ah, 1 does, right? So I could say, oh, this is radical 1 times radical 33. Well, radical 1 is 1 times... Wait a second. Oh! I'm back at radical 33. So I'm going to see this one. Uh, only one goes into it. And notice, did one really change anything? No, it did not. So in this, these last two numbers are kind of useless. So when we get there, we're going to stop at one. Because if you think any number is always a factor of one, because one times any number is going to be that number. Okay. Now, you may be thinking, well, if none of these go into it, what does that mean? Well, this means right here, folks that this is already simplified, okay? This thing is simplified already, and I can't simplify it anymore. Now, some of you might be asking, saying to yourself, well, wait, um, 33, that's, it's not just 1 and 33. I also have 3 and 11, right? So I could split this up into radical 3 times radical 11. Well, yeah, I could, but can I simplify either one of these? No, I can't simplify radical 3. I can't simplify radical 11. So if these two can't be simplified, why would I make something that looks already neat make it look a little less neat? You know what I'm saying? This right here is already simplified. So if it's simplified, we leave it as is. Okay? All right, next or last two examples here. <clears throat> I have negative radical 1,000. Again, We've seen this before with a random negative in front. Think about when you see negative x. What's the number in front of it? Remember, this is a 1. So technically, this is negative 1 times radical 1,000. So I'm going to take negative 1. I'm going to break this down into 1,000. I'm sorry, I drew one big radical. So we're going to split this into two radicals, two factors. <clears throat> and let's figure out what goes into 1,000. You should be easily thinking 100 again. So I got 100 times what would be 10. Okay, now I'm going to simplify. I'm going to get negative 1 times what square root of 100. That is 10 times radical 10. And last thing is multiply negative 1 and 10 together. That's going to give me negative 10. Radical 10. Boom, simplified. Radical, man, that's so cool. All right, let's see if you guys can try number 20, or sorry, number 9, uh, negative radical 26. Give that one a whirl. Uh, ready, set, go. All right, there you go. What's the answer? Ah, this one is just like number 7. 26 can't be simplified anymore. Again, you might think, like I did 1 and 26. Some of you might say, hey, what about 2 and 13? Well, yeah, that's a factor. Um, but can you take the square root of both of these numbers? Can you do radical 2 and radical 13? No, you can't simplify those. So therefore, we just keep it as is, negative radical 26. All right, so this is all on simplifying radicals. Again, make sure you, you get to know this um, perfect squares list, okay? Make sure you know the perfect square number line. Use it on your, uh, your, pro your practice problems and make sure you get to know it so that come the mastery check, you the master at it, you the boss at it, okay? All right. All right, in the spirit of radicals, my friends, here is a quick little video, not really quick, I guess, a two-minute video from the movie Encino Man from the 90s when radical man was used a lot. Enjoy. Okay, my friend, try and experience when about to chirp in your lobes, okay, cool? Uh. Today, buddy, we're going to discuss grindage. How to fill the furnace, pack the cheeks, and stuff the gills. Okay? You're probably used to eating twigs, right? But out here in the U.S. of A, buddy, we got something called the four basic food groups. And Link, this is not one of them. Oh. Look at what we have here. Dairy group. Milk duds. You hide these under your pillow, bro, so your mom doesn't find them, but she does your twig, buddy. Keep on cruising. Fruit group. Sweet tarts. These are killer, buddy. So citrusy, dude, you're free. Keep on cruising. Uh-huh. Hey, this is the vegetable group. Vegetable group. 
Oh, nice. Oh, put him on a pedestal, bro. Look at that. Yeah. That's a kill, huh? Meat group! Come on. Take the meat group. These are my favorite. Oh. <coughs> hey! You gotta be equal. Equals. 50-50. Here. Mm. Mm. Damn! Figures hot on the outside, icicle in the middle. Two minutes. <laughs> but you like that, right? Because you're a caveman. Cool. <laughs> the beverage. I see, bro. This is what put this place on the map. Oh. What are you doing, Mrs. Tony? No, 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 you can't do this. You can't do this here. Ah. No, no, you must be, no, please. Oh. Look, cashmere rice, you just want to just chill. No, but still. Link and I are cruising the mountain, bro. We figure we's a little juice. Ooze. No, we think the juice. We think the juice. No, 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 we think the juice. No, we think the juice. Hey, juice. Just chill, bro. No, but, but, no, no, no. It's okay. Just chill. I'll be back. No, but chill.